Hello everyone. I'm very happy to be here, albeit virtually, at the Open Source Summit 2021. Open source is the latest technology hype, right? Well, okay, maybe not for you guys, but for some people it is. Let me tell you a little bit about our journey at Daimler slash Mercedes-Benz from a traditional car manufacturing company to a company which embraces FOSS, free and open source software, and has made a commitment to open up as much as we possibly can. And maybe our story can help you too if you're in a similar position and you're trying to spread the good word of FOSS in your company. Um, so just for some structure in this talk, I would like to first speak about our motivation as to why we created the Mercedes-Benz FOSS manifesto. Then I'll introduce you to the manifesto itself and then I'll give you some pointers how this could help you on your FOSS journey. So uh, to give you some quick background, Daimler is the mother company of Mercedes-Benz and as you perhaps know, we manufacture basically vehicles. So passenger cars, vans, buses and trucks. As a company, we have been around for quite a long time and traditionally um, at our core, we are a mechanical engineering company. So we bend steel sheets in certain ways and in the end, a car comes out. So just a couple of months ago, uh, I got myself a new one of these cars and I really like it. It's quite nice, but it has one very interesting accessory that caught my attention and I brought it here with me. So uh, it's this thing here. You can find it with the instruction manual in the glove compartment. And uh, when you look inside, it's a small CD, but the car doesn't even have a CD player anymore which doesn't matter because it's not an all your CD anyway, it's a, a data CD. Um, but my company laptop also doesn't have a CD drive anymore. So how do I know what's on it? Well, fortunately it's labeled. Uh, so it says uh, license information, free and open source software. And uh, Mercedes-Benz uses free and open source software with several of its products. So this CD contains all the open source license information pertaining to your particular vehicle. And if you, like me, don't have a CD drive anymore, you can go to a website, the URL is right here, um, punch it in, and then you put in your vehicle identification number and you get all the information there as well. Clearly, the CD as such is a thing of the past. And we are right now working on doing away with it, which isn't actually as easy as it sounds uh, because there are legal obligations you have to observe. The license information has to be part of the product. It has to be physically available in the car. So it's not sufficient to just say in the manual, hey, uh, go to that website. The reason I'm telling you this, actually, it's kind of funny to have that relic of the past CD, yeah, this is the past old man, um, in your brand new high-tech Mercedes. The reason I'm telling you this is in order to say at Mercedes, we already know how to use FOSS, but we're not quite there yet to embrace all aspects of FOSS. Now, you're probably going to go, wow, you already know how to use FOSS. Impressive, Daimler, good job. Yes, I know. But a few years back, not that, that long ago, we didn't really use much FOSS at all in our software development. We were proud to develop our own code. If it's not invented here, you probably can't rely on it, right? Yeah, right. Now, that just isn't possible anymore. Even if you had all the budget in the world, you still wouldn't have all the time in the world, let alone the developer manpower. And above all, of course, it just doesn't make sense to write code for which there already is a nice available solution out there, right? Of course, I'm preaching to the choir, I realize that, but in a big corporation, uh, that requires a change of mindset that can be tricky and time consuming. 
actually the change of mindset and how it can be done is sort of the point of this talk. So I'll get back to this. Um, this was the first aspect of just using FOSS and there's a second aspect to it. Um, you need to train your employees to have the necessary awareness and understanding of the obligations that this brings with it, namely license obligations, right? You can't just use FOSS. You have to understand licenses as well, especially if the things that you produce, in our case, vehicles or software that is centered around mobility and so forth, um, contain software, right? Um, that's, of course, where that CD originates. Our current S-Class model, for example, contains about 100 different FOSS licenses. 100. And our Mercedes Me app uses over 130 FOSS components in the, uh, in the Android version and about 50 for iOS. So that means our people have to understand licenses. And so we developed an internal training to that end, which everyone in IT has to do. Okay, so far so good. Now, but just use isn't enough. You don't want to be a freeloader only. At least I personally don't. You want to say thank you to the community. Thank you for letting me use your code all these years. And if you only use FOSS, you're also not utilizing so much of the potential that FOSS has. You know, you can contribute back, you can make it better here and there for everyone. You can help steer projects in a direction that you and, other you and others benefit from. In FOSS, one plus one a lot of times does equal three, right? Okay, preaching to the choir again, forgive me. So, but what embracing FOSS means for us is use, but also contribute and also create our own open source projects and provide them to the community. We're still quite at the beginning of that aspect of uh, creating our open source projects, I have to admit, uh, but we're working on it. I'll talk about that later uh, some more. In other words, it means for us to become an active member and a good citizen of the open source community. And that is what we're trying to achieve at Mercedes-Benz. Let me illustrate how. So now, such a complete change in mindset from a proprietary software-only company towards open source has left many of our developers slightly confused. We get questions like, so now we really are allowed to use open source in our software development? Yeah? Or can we just use it or can we now really also contribute back to open source projects? Because that's what a lot of our developers had been wanting to do in the past. And it's like, no, there are certain restrictions. Don't do that just yet. But now it's like, can we now contribute back, please? Or can we even create some open source projects of our own? And um, we can do this in our working time, right? Now, the answer to all of these questions is yes, of course. Yes, please, as a matter of fact, to be more precise, yes, please do these things, all of them, right now, in your working time, all right? From other non-IT departments, we would hear things like, um, excuse us, you plan on developing software on company budget and then giving it away for free. Surely this must be some kind of misunderstanding, right? Well, then we sat down with these people <clears throat> and explained open source as a whole to them and they began to understand. Or let's say they accepted that we might have a point there. Maybe they were still a bit skeptical, but they're like, all right, let's give it a shot. So clearly, Communication about our open source strategy was taking a lot of effort. I mean, in general, when implementing such a big cultural change, you are faced with three challenges. Uh, first of all, how do we tell everyone? How do we make sure that everyone involved is made aware of this? After all, Mercedes-Benz is a big company. 
or if you take the whole Daimler or Mercedes group, uh, a big set of a big set of companies even, right? Uh, I myself am from Daimler TSS, which is an IT subsidiary. And in uh, such a big company, news tend to travel slowly before they have reached everyone. I guess many of you also know uh, that experience. Second, how can we get people to actually implement the strategy? Not just to know about it, as in point one, but make it part of their day-to-day -day work. For example, in our case, how do we crank up the number of open source contributions coming from out of our company in order to become the good open source citizen that we want to be? <clears throat> and third, uh, for me, actually, the most important one, how do we get the open source way into the mindset of people? If you master this one, then the previous point basically follows automatically because then people are motivated intrinsically to do this. So in short, we wanted to deeply ingrain FOSS into our company's DNA, if you will. And it had become clear to us that we needed to do something radical to achieve this, right? Not just to have another strategic initiative, which big companies tend to have from time to time. Um, and then we kind of had the Agile manifesto in the back of our heads, which was a pretty cool back, uh, thing back then. And so we created the Mercedes-Benz FOSS manifesto. It is a set of guidelines and core values which send our employees on their open source mission, knowing fully well that they are supported by the company. And it is now a key pillar in all of our FOSS endeavors. So I suppose that was kind of a lot of motivating how we got there and why we created the manifesto. Uh, we. Uh, that is basically uh, my colleague Basim Vazegi and myself, we wrote it down and then other colleagues and friends gave us input and ideas and feedback and helped develop it further. But so now let us actually look at it. So here we go. Our Mercedes-Benz FOSS manifesto has three parts to it and uh, we'll look at all the three parts. The first one here is the preamble. In, in order to sort of set the stage, to give the manifesto a solemn note, and to show that we mean business, that we are fully committed to the FOSS manifesto. So it reads, the Mercedes-Benz FOSS Center of Competence and the CIO, blah, 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 the lines in between, have decided to establish the following FOSS guiding principles. Uh, the FOSS Center of Competence is what we call our OSPO, our Open Source Programs Office internally. So the preamble also states our overall goals, if you read over this, that thereby we aim to improve the quality of our software, that we want to be active members of the open source community, and that we really want to work on making this happen. All right? Um, so... If you look, look at this and style-wise, it looks a little bit familiar to you, then um, perhaps you have seen the Lisbon Treaty on the European Union, right? I mean, who hasn't, okay? Um, this, it's a little bit similar just from the wording, but make no mistake, the preamble uh, purpose is not just to be pretty words, a change in a big company requires, well, uh, time for one. Uh, don't underestimate the time factor. Uh, and for two, a change is always most successful if it is supported by the people and by the senior management. Okay, some people may claim senior management are part of the people, but what I mean is, you know, top and bottom. Um, if only the crew wanted the base, you know, it may be difficult to get it through. And if only senior management wanted, they may sort of have the power to push it. But if the people aren't convinced, it just won't be very successful. So that's why the preamble here shows, look, this comes from the people at the base and is fully backed up by senior management. Um, and in our case, this actually goes to the very top, including our CEO, Ola Kelenius, who has endorsed it as well. 
and um, I'm very, very happy about this. All right, so let's move on to the next page. The next two parts are the company's principles and the employee's principles. Here are the company's principles. So a lot of times our employees are still a bit uncertain, as I already mentioned, um, if they are allowed to have their own open source projects and if they're allowed to contribute to other open source projects. Because as I mentioned earlier, that actually hasn't always been the case in the past for various reasons. The intention of the company principles is to not only show the employees that indeed they are allowed to do, to do so, uh, but it actually sends them on a mission to do exactly that. So the first principle here encourages employees to use, contribute, and create projects, both in open and inner source endeavors, right? Now, a lot of times employees will tell you, but I have to work productively on my project. I don't have the time to do open source or inner source on the side, even though it may be related to my work. So it is the purpose of principle number two to let the employees know that it is indeed absolutely okay for them to take the time to work on such projects as well. Because as I also already mentioned earlier, this is actually something that creates value for everyone and for us too, right? So it's not at all wasted time or extra effort without benefit, which is a position that unfortunately is sometimes still held by people who are not too familiar with open source in the first place. All right, next one, principle number three. It lets employees know that they are supposed to learn and grow with FOSS. Take the time to do so. And for example, attend conferences and even give a talk perhaps. I don't need to mention that learning, advancing or an exchange with experts is a good idea for personal growth. I think that's pretty obvious. So we just want to make it clear that we ask our employees to do that as well. Principle number four strives to promote visibility, for example, through active membership and participation in open source foundations. We are, for example, a founding member of the Eclipse Foundation Europe, which is a really cool thing. Uh, we are members of the Linux Foundation, Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and a couple more uh, through our IT subsidiary and my home base, Dano TSS. All right, moving on. The next slide are the principles from an employee's point of view. They basically ask of an employee to become more active in the FOSS world and to think FOSS first. So principle number one says, please look for alternatives in open and inner source first before you write code for which there already is a nice solution out there. Um, the old, let's not reinvent the wheel over and over again. Uh, we emphasize inner source here as well because we think this is really important too. Uh, but the order goes open source first, then inner source, and only then uh, write new code of your own. Principle number two says, please be active in inner source. And number three, please be active in open source. And then lastly, number four is sort of a mini code of conduct. Please be nice. Act responsibly. Be a good citizen. Remember that how you behave out there will reflect back on the company as a whole. And obviously, it's in the best interest of everyone to hope uphold a good image here. So to sum it up, we hope that our Mercedes-Benz FOSS manifesto and its principles will help to facilitate the cultural change in our company towards an open and inner source savvy company. Now you may say, well, that sounds fantastic, Wolfgang. Now you have the Mercedes-Benz FOSS manifesto on paper or on virtual paper. How is that working out for you? Has anything changed yet? Um, in German, we have a saying that translates literally into uh, paper is patient. In English, you'd say uh, paper doesn't blush. 
meaning that just because you have it written down doesn't necessarily have any consequences yet. So how to bridge the gap between having the manifesto and people actually doing it? We have to put it into action. Establish the culture around it. How to do that? And I hope actually this might help you too if you're in a similar position and you want to establish FOSS and a FOSS mindset in your company. Well, it is no surprise that you're going to have to do a lot of communication in order to create a visibility. So we are now working on making this known in the entire company or of course predominantly in the IT departments, but not only. The very first thing you have to do is to get senior management buy-in at executive level. I think that's pretty obvious. You can't do it without because you just can't make claims about people how people can use their working time without getting C-level approval, right? Um, so as I hinted at earlier, we showed this idea, the manifesto and everything around it, to our CIO and he was quite pleased with it. He really supports FOSS, which is great. And then, as I mentioned, we also got the approval even of our CEO. And so once that happens, then you have the go. And that's, that is a prerequisite need C-level approval. All right, so something that proved quite valuable for us after that was uh, that we were just very recently able to speak about the manifesto at an IT senior management meeting to show it to all of our senior management. Um, and so now we hope that the information will sort of be disseminated top down, right? Which in a big company doesn't happen automatically, contrary to what one might assume, unfortunately. I mean, it should, and sometimes it does, but you just can't rely on it. So at the same time, you have to work on making it known at the base too, mainly through publishing internal articles, uh, for example, in your social internet, if you have something like this, uh, speaking at internal gatherings, speaking at external conferences. Um, we are planning on making FOSS hackathons and a number of other things like that in order to show that we really mean it. Um, I can't give you a perfect one-size-fits-all recipe here uh, because this, of course, also depends on the peculiarities of your company, size mainly, and uh, many other factors. Uh, and to be honest, we are ourselves still in the process of the communication work here. We have already done quite a bit, but there is a lot ahead that we still need to do. Right, hackathons, we have done many hackathons, but particularly FOSS hackathons with the manifesto as a basis. We haven't done that yet, we're planning on it. So, I hope I have sparked your interest. Where can you find the FOSS manifesto? Head to this website, opensource.mercedes-benz.com. Uh, this is our FOSS landing page. It is still brand new. We have just taken it live a couple of weeks ago. So I don't think it's very high up in the uh, Google ranking yet. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, if you Google open source and Mercedes-Benz or Daimler, uh, you will get as a first hit to that website uh, where you can enter your vehicle identification number and get the open source licenses for that vehicle. Yeah, so the information that is also on that CD I showed you at the beginning. All right. Um, on our FOSS landing page here, open source, mercedes-benz.com, you can find some blog entries, not very many yet. There will be more because as I said, we literally just went live with the page. And you can find some of our open source projects. Also, not very many yet at all, sorry, um, because we don't have that many yet, simply, right? Hopefully more soon as time goes by and more and more. Um, so we're just starting with that, right? So yeah, we'll put stuff there as soon as we have it and we're looking for cool open source projects to put there. Yeah, oh, and you can find the FOSS manifesto on that page and you can download it if you like. Um, yeah, so that's it. Please feel free to take a closer look at our manifesto. Um, a, fr a friend of mine once called it the manifesto, which I thought it was pretty funny, actually. Uh, uh, yeah, you can use it, disseminate it, 
I hope you like it. I hope you find it useful. And uh, let us know what you think. Yeah, are, are we missing some principles? Do we have quite enough? The wrong ones? The right ones? Tell us what's on your mind. I'll be glad to hear from you. So this talk um, is pre-recorded, as you probably know, because unfortunately, transatlantic traveling is still a bit difficult. But um, at the time of recording, it was planned that there's a live Q&A session directly after it. So if that works, I will be in the chat right now. And um, I think I might have talked a little faster than intended. Um, I guess that's with virtual recording. Um, so we have maybe a bit more time even. All right. So I hope you have some questions for me. And you can, of course, also shoot me an email. The contact info is also on that web page. Thank you very much for listening and taking the time to do so. Thanks.